these barriers that are set. I mean, it almost looks like they're trying to trap wild hogs or something. The federal government needs to step in with the full force of its authority. We started seeing Texas DPS separating the husband from the wife and children. It's just horrible to see someone treat people this way. A first for Democrats a visit to Eagle Pass after the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, takes the security of the border into his own hands. Republican delegations have been here numerous times since last year. So what did the politicians have to say after seeing the measures taken by the governor? I'm Javi Virgen with Sinclair Broadcasting. Thank you for being with us on this new edition of Immigration Crisis, the fight for the southern border. The trip made by a delegation of Democrats and also members of the Hispanic Caucus included a visit to Heavenly Farms, a pecan farm that has become ground zero of the immigration battle. We recently spent the evening at Heavenly Farms once night fell. The reason why, because we wanted to see if the number of migrants went down in the darkness. It is hot, difficult to sometimes get around. And now part of the Rio Grande here in Eagle Pass looks like this. People are dying every day because of what the governor's doing. Some who grew up here on the border say it is hard to watch what has become their river. When you see a state agency pushing out a federal agency. Democrats. That is and Republicans alike y'all are the ones that are trespassing don't like most of the changes but with hundreds of thousands of migrants crossing the state of Texas and the federal government are at odds on who is in charge of immigration and what to do to stop the flow of hundreds of thousands of migrants crossing every day the presence of DPS and the National Guard has slowed down migrants, but not stopped all of those who have traveled, in some cases, thousands of miles seeking asylum, like 17-year-old Joe Nyker from Venezuela, whom we met here three weeks ago at Heavenly Farms, the pecan farm now at the center of the fight between the state of Texas and the federal government. But not all migrants cross during the day. Some jump into the river when night falls. Pretty dark as you can see. From Heavenly Farms, we watched in the cover of night. We see families and others crossing and being stopped by the National Guard once they get through the razor wire. As they wait for DPS to come get them, we notice something across the river on the Mexican side. We observed a woman, a coyote, bringing people down to the river. We observed this for about 30 minutes. You can see the ripples in the water and hear voices. As we continue down the dirt road, we see more National Guard. There is a holding area that we have shown you in previous stories that looks like this during the day. You cannot see it now. And when we get to the top of the property, DPS and Border Patrol are waiting to receive from down below by the river the group that has come in during the last two hours. Around 11 o'clock at night, we start seeing the migrants be led up. In the darkness, we can make them out including the children. We count in all 130 men, women, and children who are now in the process of being handed over to Border Patrol. Among them, the children we had seen two hours earlier by the fence with the National Guard. They are now in the group of unaccompanied minors. What stands out the most to us is the cooperation between those working here on this hot Texas summer night. That includes giving aid, 
to a little girl who had become overheated. In spite of the legal fight between the state and the federal government, boots on the ground, meaning National Guard, Texas DPS troopers, and Border Patrol agents work together. All of them show professionalism and care for those in their custody. We hear agents and troopers talking about the food and other items they pay out of pocket to give aid to the migrants they may encounter. And the empathy shown to all, especially the children, is not often captured by cameras, but it is there. After an hour and a half, all 130 are processed and leave, but soon it will be time for another group that is now assembling down by the river in the darkness. Jamie Virgen, Fox News at 9. We caught up with San Antonio Congressman Joaquin Castro and state representative, the Democrat from the area, Roland Gutierrez, after the Democrats' visit. So you have Democrats and Republicans in the area saying there is an inability in Washington to get something done. What would you say to those people that are tired of seeing people get hurt, ranchers, widows in their house scared to death? Well, listen, I think they're right to be upset with Congress. And Congress came close in 2014 to passing comprehensive immigration reform that would have solved a lot of these problems. But remember, Donald Trump made the border and immigration the number one boogeyman issue for the Republican Party. So it's hard for any Republicans to come to the table and compromise on immigration when their number one issue is beating up on the border. So that has made it tough. You know, I have said that I'm willing to sit down with anyone. Uh, I have legislation on visa reform. Uh, I've been part of legislation on agricultural workers, for example. And so there's different pieces to this. But right now, whether you're liberal or conservative, you probably believe, and rightly, that we have a broken immigration system and that it needs to be fixed. Is the Biden administration too soft? We've seen this issue get worse during the Biden administration. Well, well, remember, since the end of Title 42, border crossings are down, right? We have more Border Patrol agents, about 23,000, about quadruple the number that we had 20 years ago. We have drones on the border. We have anti-tunnel technology on the border. So we have more resources at the border right now than we've ever had before. But what you have is a lot of Republican politicians who lie and who accuse Democrats of supporting open border policies, uh, which if you come here, you see everything here, nobody would say that it's an open border. Uh, and so a lot of that is also the story that's been spun by these folks. The last question. I mean, some of that money out there is federal money. What can you do? If we don't like what we're seeing today, it is federal money that was given to the state of Texas. Yeah, a lot of this money was given to the state of Texas because of the pandemic. So all that razor wire and the buoys that you see out there, that money was supposed to be spent on health care and helping small businesses get back on their feet uh, and restaurants that were on the brink of going out of business. But instead of using it for education and for all of that, Greg Abbott decided to put it right there on the river with razor wire and with barrel traps and create de drowning devices. You're here all the time. You're in the area. You know what's going on here. What can they do? I mean, it seems like an inability to be able to get reform through because we're so polarized. Well, let's, let's be very clear. I mean, we are we obviously very polarized. They've got great ideas to try to institute change, but we've got a United States Senate where we can't get anything through because of a filibuster. And so we need to have Democrats over there, Chuck Schumer and others, uh, bust the filibuster so that we can have good positive legislation that affects change here. And that positive legislation could mean creating visa programs where you apply in your country of origin and so on. Nevertheless, that's not what they're here about. They're, look at, they're looking at this injustice and this travesty that this governor has created. The fact is, since the re-implementation of Title VIII two months ago, we've seen border crossings cut it in more than half. But Greg Abbott wants to continue to create chaos. So what did he do? He brought in the buoys. He brought in the razor wire. And now his latest stunt is causing people and children, women and children, to die. Men to die. That's inhumane. It's criminal. We need to be very clear about it. And so, you know, we were told today by DPS that there's an investigation forthgoing. We know that they're calling it an audit. Crimes have committed, have been committed here. 
There needs to be a criminal investigation. Let me ask you this. DPS is out here because the governor ordered them to be out here as part of Operation Lone Star. Mm -hmm. You've seen all the stuff that's been going down here at the border. Yeah, Everybody sure. forgets the border until it's election time until, or until there's an issue like this one that they can hang on to. That's right. You're here. What do you tell your people? I mean, we get tired of coming down and doing the stories, and they keep asking us for help. I'm not the elected official. I tell people to wake up and vote. They got to wake up and vote because Republicans are buying off on this crap, thinking that, oh, the Republicans are tough. No, they're just creating chaos. They're not fixing this problem. The problem can be fixed, but they don't want to do that. And when we have reductions in crossings, we have to make it seem like there's chaos down here. I mean, I literally saw two Black Hawk helicopters by the Texas military department today. That's a joke and a farce. You know, they've made this community of Eagle Pass look like a war zone along the border. That's not representative of what happens down here. And I tell Democrats, well, you gotta go out and vote. And so I'm talking to both people. Demand more from your elected officials to have them tell you the truth and read, investigate, learn for yourself what's truly happening in these border communities. Talk to me about the people that have been arrested at Shelby Park. I think it's like over 400 yeah. men that have been arrested. And then the Fifth Court of Appeal had that ruling where somebody brought it forth saying, this is discrimination. Women are let go and men are arrested. Yeah, a couple different things. I mean, so now Greg Abbott is arresting women, right, pursuant to that Fourth Court of Appeals decision. So he's arresting women. The Shelby Park thing is the mayor unfortunately issued an order which was rescinded by the city council. Uh, calling that private property, not public property. The immigrants were processing there through border, with Border Patrol. And so they were asking for asylum. Let's be very clear. Most people get deported. 99% of the people get deported. A few get asylum. Not even asylum, but the beginnings of an asylum, which is called credible fear. Our system is working as well as it can be. It is taxing and we need to fix it. People need to demand that their congressmen and their senators fix it and stop the nonsense. They need to demand that. These people here, they have good ideas. They want to be able to do it. We need to break the filibuster in the Senate. We need to re break this Republican roadblock that's happening because they don't want to solve the problem. They just want to yell about it. Friends, that is all for this week. Thank you for joining us again for this edition of Immigration Crisis, the fight for the southern border. For Sinclair Broadcasting, I'm Jamie Virgen in Texas.